I'm going to take you way back, way back to my college days, which is 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> years ago. <laughs> This is the next month. Anyway, college days. Chemistry class. I wasn't a particularly great chemistry student. But I remember the table of elements. How many of you remember the periodic table? Or maybe from high school chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I don't claim to be a, a scholar, much less a chemist. But I do know that um, there are now more, period, more elements on the table than there were when I was in high school. They discovered new ones. There may be more yet to discover. So this is a hard to look at for the next one. But I do know that the first 26 elements on the periodic table of elements were all formed in the furnace of a star somewhere, somewhere. Oh. And we don't quite understand fully. I mean, somebody understands it. I don't begin to fathom how everything that we see and touch and eat everything that we see and touch and eat and smell and taste and are is literally stardust. It came from the stars. So that, you know, touch any part of your body, and then, you know, elbow right here, and, and, and here and all these holes in here. Pick, pick one cell, any one cell there, look into that cell, and if you could trace that cell back to where it came from in your mother's womb, not the cell itself, but the atoms in the cell came intact from somewhere. Every atom in this cell, in this wrinkle, in this elbow, came from somewhere. If I trace it back through the food I ate, or let's trace it back through my mother's body and through the food that she ate. And one particular spinach salad she ate once contained this atom of, call it helium, right here. This one here, atom of helium. And, and back before her salad, it was in the soil. And before it was in the soil, it was where? Well, it, it was in a rock in a mountain, and we think that the mountains are, are permanent, the most permanent thing we think of is a mountain, but if we look back through geologic time, if you were to do a time-lapse photography of time from now to the beginning of the Earth four billion years ago, you would see a picture of the mountains galloping across the landscape. Every mountain came from somewhere. Okay, what I'm saying is that I am a total mystery standing here. And I am, you are a magnificently complex creation of life with capacities and resources and possibilities beyond comprehension. And I spend my, most of my time thinking I'm really harsh singer-songwriter. And I judge myself on how good my performance was last, last night. Was pretty good. <laughs> but this morning I got here and I brought the wrong chord. I didn't have the right chord. And, I, and it was like, I don't know, the strings are going to change. And the tuner, with my tuner, I don't know. <laughs> because I identify with singer-songwriter. And in that moment, oh, last night, yeah. Singer songwriter, I'm a husband, and I'm a father, I'm, 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 I can, but those are roles. Those are all little boxes that I live in, and I judge myself how well I check that box today. And then act as if that's a totality of who I am, but I'm much more than that. Easy to remember on a good day. Not so hard to remember on the bad days, but capable of being remembered at any time under any circumstance. That's what we're here to remind us of. But we know this. We know. I'm not telling you anything new. But we gather to remember and to look each other into the eye and say, "God, 
You are a magical, complex, incredibly creative, mystery genius. And so are you, Bunny. And so are you, Ray. And so are you, Carl. And so are you, Rudy. I forget. You're here to remind each other. Black and my soul and the Holy Mystery. Which is why I have taken the liberty of convening the Church of the Holy Crayon this morning. <laughs> You were given a lap board and a couple of pieces of paper. Anyone missing that? Say we'll give you the, should also have a bag of crayons. Everybody got some their art supplies for today's Church of the Holy Crayon. And just know that what we're about to do, you're going to do perfectly. There is no way you can do it wrong. So, now that you've got your supplies ready, I invite you to take a moment to close your eyes. Or not. You just kind of relax. And imagine you're in your favorite place in nature, or whatever that might be. It might be your own backyard where you were born. It might be a place you were in Japan or Hawaii. Once. Just take a moment to occupy a favorite place in your mind's eye out in nature and feel yourself there or see yourself there if you're a sensory person or a visual person what what is the temperature there are you there by yourself or are you there with others what is it like what what else is in the environment around you take a look, moment to look at some natural objects around you in your mind's eye. And allow yourself to focus on one particularly beautiful thing right there in that environment in this favorite place of yours out in nature. Focus on one thing. Just, just take a good long look at it. Step in a little closer or, or, or maybe pick it up and bring it closer to you. But really look at this beautiful natural object. And now, using your crayon, draw it to the best of your ability. That, that beautiful object you just saw, just draw it. And no one's looking at you, and no one's going to judge you. We're not going to ask you to hold it up yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Nope, this is one of those no pressure assignments. And if you don't want to do it, this will be over in a few minutes. <laughs> but just draw it. Just draw it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Just so you know that it's there, and you know what it is. You know what it is, then. That's good. Right. And just for the fun of it, you might try changing drawing hands right now, because that kind of messes with your creative self. Oh. Just, just try it. See what happens when you change hands. Oh. Keep drawing your object. No right way, no wrong way. Just lose it. Uh, we got many more. I got a whole bag for you, Professor. Drawing too hard. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't let it be hard. This is not, you know, this is just the start of the exercise. It take about one more minute on your drawing. Now, somewhere on that, on that drawing, off to the corner, use a crayon to write what this is. Like in my case, I happen to draw a favorite hackberry tree in my house where I've got a little tree house. I love to climb up in every once in a while. I love the whole world. That's mine. It's a, it's a hackberry tree. What, what is yours? And it, just, just try it out. What it is. Just so, just so you know. Okay. And now, 
looking at that drawing, take your other piece of paper, you should have had a second piece of paper, and write at least five positive characteristics of your drawing. For instance, my, my uh, hackberry tree provides shade. It also provides nutrition for the birds. They love hackberry berries. And uh, oh, it gives me a place of uh, safety when I'm up in my treehouse. Oh, I love being. So those are three characteristics of my tree. Just three, at least five. If you think of seven or ten, that's fine too. But at least five positive characteristics of your drawing. You're out. Or you can't do this wrong. At least five characters. Everybody got it? More or less? I know there's some overachievers in here trying to get to 15 or something, right? Okay. Now, using the back side of your drawing, look at that list of five or more characteristics and turn them into I am sentences. For instance, my tree gives shade. I provide shade and nurturing for others. Might be one thing. Uh, I, the, the, uh, one other statement is it provides uh, nutrition for the birds. I provide sustenance for others, or I am a source of generosity. Turn it into five positive statements about yourself. And now that you know what the game is, make them as positive and affirmative and glowing as possible. Because we're talking about you, not just about the tree, not just about the crystal or the spring, whatever you, the word out there. What you see is who you are, a reflection of who you are. All right. Now comes the fun part. Yeah. I invite you to turn to the person next to you, unless that's your partner, in which case I invite you to turn to the person on the other side of you. And if you don't want to turn, and, and I'm going to ask you to read your statements out loud and own them. I am a source of abundance in the world. I am a nurturing person in the world, whatever. I, I invite you turn to a person next to you and share this out loud. And if that's too threatening and you want to just, you're an introvert, just do it, keep it to yourself, that's fine too. But it's better if you share it with somebody. Share it out loud. Okay. All right. Kids in the class are having a lot of fun. Where's Take just a few nap seconds. Your nap rug, the milk and cookies are coming up. Oh, yes. Yeah, and they can take the whole crayon bag home. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. If we can encourage further crayon activity in the world, that'd be great. And stickers are, are yours. Okay. Alright, so let's take a moment now to just take that in. Just take in the joy of it, the foolishness of it. Yeah, silly. But it's also true. What you see in the world that bothers you <coughs> is you. What you see in the world that you admire is you. The world has so much to teach you and show you if you're paying attention. We used our little exercise to focus on one object in the world, but at any given point in time, there are multiple beautiful objects and people and teachers waiting to show you something. And yes, at any given moment in the world, there are multiple possible sources of irritation. Yeah. Absolutely. But you get to choose where you focus. You don't get to choose what's in your life. You do get to choose what you focus on. So for the next few moments, we're going to focus on, just as a starting point, these four or five or seven aspects of yourself that you've seen. 
And let yourselves help settle just on one for now. One, one glowingly positive aspect of yourself you would like to affirm. Casey's beautiful first verse of his poem. In the simplicity of first light, be a prayer. Offer yourself to the heavens. Be the mouth of gratitude. Allow your spirit to seek sweetness. Right now in this moment, we're seeking on, resting on, being the sweetness and power and joy and the creativity that is you. This physical organ, which beats 50, 60, 70 times a minute, and has for every moment of your life, sending blood to every cell and fiber of your being. But it's more than your physical heart. It is your metaphysical heart we are here to nurture and focus on. Feel your willingness to be this energy in the world. On this day of the autumnal equinox, the balance of light and dark, let us choose together to focus on light and love not as an abstract thing out in the world, but as the truth of who you are resonating in the world. to the stars and to all of creation. of opening and willingness, won't you send forth your love and blessing into the world? 
literally blessing all beings, all nations, all creations with the same love and blessing you're feeling now. Knowing that is not for you alone, but to be shared. And then feeling that love sent out in the world, reflected back to you, magnified and multiplied by your willingness to be an instrument of love in the world. <coughs> may you, may we, may all beings be blessed by your willingness to do this. And so it is. Amen.